Sometimes when we're trying to land at an airport, it can be a bit too foggy for us to make an approach and landing safely. And we need to either divert somewhere else or wait until the fog clears and the visibility improves. But what is it that causes these visibility issues in the first place? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Grant and welcome to the 10th class in the Meteorology series where we're going to be taking a look at visibility. Visibility is vitally important to land an aircraft at an airport safely. So we've got to understand why we get low levels of visibility so we can use that information to help judge whether an airport is safe or not to land at. Levels of visibility lower due to a number of natural environmental factors. The sun in your eyes makes you squint and reduces your personal visibility, for example. But more importantly, and more prominently, is problems due to clouds. When you're inside a cloud and light reflects off of the suspended water and ice particles, it can greatly impair your ability to see out of the windscreen, um, which reduces your visibility, obviously. When high up in the clouds, this isn't really an issue, as if you're flying in the clouds, you will be flying using instruments under something called instrument flight rules, which is a way of flying where you're not looking out the window, you're just looking at the instruments. When you're close to the ground, though, and trying to take off and land, you don't do these maneuvers off of instruments. You use these, you do these maneuvers um, by actually looking out the window. So you need to be able to see where you're going. This means that we are most interested in the clouds that are at ground level, which is what we call fog or mist. Fog is when you have visibility which is less than a thousand meters, and mist is when it's less than five thousand meters. That's the only difference between the two. There are a few different types of fog, and in the class on clouds I explained what radiation fog is, but I'll just give a quick reminder now. So when we have relatively high humidity levels, and on a cold night, the surface temperature of the earth cools down. This cold surface cools the air just above it through radiation. And if it cools the air down to below the dew point, then the moisture in the air will condense and form into clouds. Depending on the levels of wind, the cold air can then travel upwards and cool down air higher up, causing yet more condensation and a thicker layer of fog or mist to form. Radiation fog is most common first thing in the morning. As more heat comes in for, throughout the day, the sun starts to heat the surface back up, that surface starts to heat the air back up, and the air can move back above the dew point temperature, and the fog will evaporate back into water vapour in the air and it will clear. You also get advection fog, which is a term used to describe fog by warm, humid air blowing in over a cold surface. The cold surface then cools down this warm, humid air to below the dew point and the water vapour condenses out into fog. You most often see this in coastal areas. So a mass of moisture-filled sea air blows into shore and as it hits the cold land, um, or slightly colder land, this cools down this humid air and forms fog. Evaporation fog forms when water vapour evaporates, so warm water vapour evaporates into colder air above it, and the colder air above it immediately cools the air back down to below the dew point, and the water vapour will condense out to form fog. These considerations for formation of the fog are all relative, and what I mean by that is when I say warm air or cold air, um, I don't mean warm air that's 25 degrees Celsius, I mean it's warmer when compared to the cold condition. So with evaporation fog, for example, this is very common in the Arctic. The warm sea, you know, it's not really warm, it's Arctic sea temperature, evaporates into the cold air above it. In reality, both temperatures are pretty cold, but the water is just a fraction warmer, and it is often called Arctic sea smoke as a result of this. Frontal fog moves in with a front of warm air. So as the warm air front moves in, it rises over the colder air mass because it is less dense. And any precipitation that falls from the clouds in the warm front fall into cooler air below it. This precipitation also pulls air down with it as it goes, and this warm air descends into colder air and causes the warmer air to cool down 
to below the dew point and for clouds to form at the surface in the form of fog. The precipitation that falls also increases the levels of humidity at the surface and will lead to a higher relative humidity, which has the effect of increasing the dew point temperature, which means that they don't need to cool down as much for the air to condense out. Orographic fog is caused by the air being forced to rise. If a mountain gets in the way of humid air blowing in, forces the air to rise, and as it does this, it cools adiabatically. And if it cools to below the dew point temperature, the moisture condenses out to form fog. It's kind of just like clouds, but because the land rises with the rising air, it's considered surface level, so it's fog. So all these types of fog have something in common, and it's basically just the cooling down of warm, humid air to below the dew point. It's as simple as that. There's just a few methods of doing that. So these are the main causes of natural fog or mist and problems to do with visibility. But you can also get man-made or unnatural visibility problems caused by pollution, essentially. So if we have very stable conditions with a high pressure and low levels of rising air, then all the dust and smoke particles don't rise into the air and spread out. They stay at low levels and uh, cause visibility issues when we're trying to take off and land. So this happens most prominently in areas with levels of industry, uh, high levels of industry, high population levels, and it's just referred to as haze or smog rather than fog or mist. As pilots, we are interested in visibility at the surface, which will be measured at the aerodrome. But before we go into that, there's an important point to make. So the visibility on the ground and the visibility in the air will be slightly different. So say we had an aircraft up here, it doesn't really matter what the height is, but we're above a 200 meter layer of fog and the visibility within that fog is 500 meters. So while we're on the ground in our aircraft and we look straight ahead, we would be able to see 500 meters ahead of us. But when we are directly above this layer and we look directly down, because the layer of fog is less than 500 meters deep, it's only 200 meters deep, we would be able to see the surface. And as we look further and further away from the nose of the aircraft, we start to look through more and more of the fog and the visibility starts to reduce because we're then getting close to this 500 meter maximum distance. We're only looking through 200 meters here, but by the time we get here, we're looking through a lot more and eventually we'll get to the point when we're looking through 500 meters. So you can think of it as either looking further and further away, or if we get lower and lower and lower, we're going to therefore naturally have to look through more and more of the fog until we reach that point when we're on the ground, looking through the whole 500 meters of the fog. In essence, this means that when we are higher up, we have a larger visual segment as we're looking at the fog from an angle. And when we're lower down, we're looking through more and more of the fog and less of the air that is free of the fog. So when you have low visibility reported and you look straight down and you can see all the runway clearly, this is the reason why they have a low visibility because when you're on the ground, you can actually, you're looking through more of the fog and the visibility will be a lot worse. So hopefully that makes sense. And um, it's all just to do with the angle at which you're looking through it. Um, you're looking through more or you're looking through less depending on uh, where you're actually aiming for. So say the runway start point was here the lower and lower you get, you're going to be looking through more and more of the fog and your visibility is going to be worse. Anyway, we measure visibility in 50 meter increments up to 800 meters, then 100 meter steps up to 5,000 meters and 1,000 meter steps up to 10 kilometers. And if the visibility is more than 10 kilometers, you'll just see a little plus um, on a weather report or you might see four nines, it might just say 9999 which means visibility is more than 10. Visibility is a measure of the opacity of the air, how opaque it is, and we can either use physical objects that are known distances away to gauge it. So say you're standing at one side of the airport, you know the tower is 500 meters away and you can't see it. You know that the visibility would therefore be less than 500 meters. But more accurately, you can use a bit of kit called a transmissometer which basically uses a light and a sensor 
to detect how much light is passing through the air and therefore gives a value of the opaqueness and opacity of the air and the visibility levels. So when the visibility reaches certain low levels, depending on the airport, a more accurate measure of visibility can be provided, which is called a runway visual range, an RVR. And it applies only to the specific landing runway. The reason for this is that some aircraft will have a bit of equipment called an automatic landing system, which allows the aircraft to land in very, very low visibility conditions. This requires a high level of accurate measurement and accuracy in the visibility readings, which will allow the pilots to assess the situation and see whether it is safe or not to uh, carry out one of these uh, types of approach on that specific runway. So the airport might have a general visibility of 700 meters, for example, but the specific landway, landway, the specific landing runway might have a reported runway visual range of 300 meters. So um, that would require special procedures and the RVR is basically runway specific visibility, whereas visibility in general is just the airport's overall visibility. So quick class, just to summarize then, you've got various types of cooling down of humid air to form fog. That's the fundamental process behind all these types of fog cool down humid air and it forms into fog, you cool it below the dew point. So radiation is when the cold surface cools the air above it to below the dew point, forming fog. Advection is when warm humid air blows in over a colder surface and the colder surface cools down that warm humid air to below the dew point, forming fog. Evaporation fog is when there's cold air above a warmer sea in the Arctic, for example, and the evaporating air immediately cools back down to below the dew point and condenses out to form fog. Frontal fog is formed by falling precipitation and air coming into contact with colder conditions and the precipitation raises the humidity levels. So you've got humid air and the colder air cools that down um, to form fog to below the dew point. And orographic fog is when terrain, a mountain, causes the air to rise. It cools as it rises and forms a cloud. But because that cloud is very close to the land, because it's close to the mountain, it's considered fog. And the difference between fog and visibility, uh, fog and mist, is just the visibility. Below 1,000 metres is fog and below 5,000 metres is mist. And if you've got visibility problems due to man-made factors, you do either call it smog or haze. Visibility at airports is reported in 50 meter increments up to 800 meters, 100 meter increments up to 5,000 meters, and 1,000 meter increments up to 10 kilometers. And if it's more than 10 kilometers, you'll see a 10K plus, or you might just see four nines on a report, all the nines as people call it. So the difference between visibility and runway visual range is visibility is just airport general, whereas RVR is runway specific, which you might need a very accurate measure of to know if you can do um, a more accurate type of approach, for example, um, using the uh, automatic landing systems. And then you've got an uh, important point to note is your visual segment. Basically, the lower down you are, the more of the fog or mist you're gonna be looking through, so your visibility is going to be worse. Say you're aiming for a point, this is the runway here, you're aiming for the runway. As you get lower and lower, you're gonna be looking through more and more of the fog as you come into land. So when some the airport reports a visibility of 800 meters, but you're, you can see the runway from the cruise, this is the reason why. As you get lower and lower, you're gonna be looking through more of the fog as you come into land.